Hey, hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to my stream. Thank you, AJ, for moderating the stream again. Nice to see you in the chat. And please read the disclaimer. We are talking about playing a computer game, obviously. Even if we are trying to understand the technical and regulatory concepts involved in running trains as thoroughly as possible. But please leave the real world trains alone. Because we are not qualified to train you and obviously we are not allowed to touch trains and it is a nuisance. So what have I planned for today? I wanted to round up the French series by talking about speed signaling and um, uh, direction indicators and round up the shunting signals that you can see in the game. Um, always obviously with the little problem that we only have this one French DLC. That is a high speed DLC and we don't have really that much material to show and to enjoy in the game. Nevertheless, I wanted to make this series comprehensive insofar as that we are adding the speed signaling, the signs and the signal aspects, and also the shunting signals as such to, uh, to the archive of videos. I wanted to use one service um, and then start a bit unconventionally by going around with the free camera to look at the speed signs that we can actually see in the game. I've never managed to find a service where you can encounter speed signaling aspects on the signals, even though they exist in the French system. So, we are here in our DGV Duplex 200 at Marseille Saint-Charles station and we are waiting at a red signal. We have talked about those red and green and yellow signals, about the NF and the F signals, about the Uton and stuff in the video about the color light signaling stopping sequence the first french signaling video we have talked about the purple lights as well today i want to talk about signs of that kind for example tgv 20 autre train other trains 10 and g what tells you that you are going to the garage what is always written on those blue signs so it is hard to go anywhere but to the garage in this yard here and at least if you are following the signs here is another sign so you always get this sign we'll talk about it later in the presentation when you're going from a mainline way to a service way meaning to a depot or garage or uh, or, or, or sidings where you can put your train out of the way. So where can we find some speed signs? I think not here in this yard, but on this line that is not active in our game. But here, for example, you can see those signs a 90 that cannot really be read easily unless you're looking at it from the correct angle underneath a sign with a Z telling you um, well we will see what it is what it will tell you in the in the presentation later so here we have split speed sign 70 and 60 the Z to um, already spoil that always tells you that the speed reduction actually begins. So we have seen this in a lot of systems. Typically you have one uh, announcement sign that tells you what kind of speed limit is coming in and then later or in this case at the same time you get a sign that tells you that here the speed limit actually begins. So if you get a signage of that kind uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, looking at it from 
the correct angle gives AG the witness flashbacks because we have been playing the witness game, a great game where a lot of puzzles in it. But uh, I'm not talking about the witness game today, but it's a bit the same thing here. So usually those signs should be made in a way that you can read the number on it easily. Uh, even if you're not looking from the correct direction. So, well, so wh what I was talking about, the typical sequence announcement, you get typically a whiteboard with black numerals announcing a speed reduction, and then the execution sign for a beginning is set. And when it ends, you can get a sign that looks like this, white on black with an R on it. Not in the game, I have not found one, otherwise I would have shown you. What else can we see? I will go with the free camera on the bit so that I can show you without the threat of having to drive the train, the train at the same time. Sometimes you need a situation or you have a situation where you encountering a switch and uh, depending on what the switch is set to, you are encountering a speed limit because you're going over the switch, for example, or you're not getting a speed reduction and not a speed limit and your speed limit because you're going straight ahead over the switch and no speed limit applies to that so for those situations you need to have switchable speed signs and for example this is a switchable speed sign that announces uh, speed reduction that only applies if you are going across the switch and then this you can maybe see it this diamond in the middle then will turn white and will show a number on it. I have never actually seen it happen in the game, although we we will see that in the service later we encounter a situation where we should get one of those. So a black numeral on a white diamond. We all think back on the TVM 430, right? We always get black numerals and white diamonds if we're encountering a reduction in speed limit. So the same uh, appearance um, applies to this too. If it is not active, then you will get this aspect that we are looking at at the moment, and you will get this white line, this white uh, vertical bar telling you that you are going straight ahead. This, I think, is what this is supposed to tell you, and that the speed reduction does not apply. In case this limit would be active, because you are running across the switch, then you will not only get the announcement with the white diamond but you would only get uh, would also get the execution on this pod here this is actually something that we can see in the game later you would get white numerals on black ground as the execution sign for the announced uh, speed limit because you're going across a switch then you will get the same numerals here in white on black ground and then you're going on and this sign tells you here does the switch area actually begin. It is a chevron pointing to the bottom. And this is where the speed limit actually needs to be in place and enforced because here is the part of track where the switch begins. You can see that the switch actually has its points here and its switching machine. And at this point, the speed limit needs to be enforced latest. So this sequence is typical, we will see that in the presentation later. The white diamond to announce a speed limit, the white numerals on black ground to tell you now it starts and then the chevron pointing to the bottom to tell you that uh, here the switch begins and the limit needs to be enforced here latest. What else do we have that can be shown if you're using the external camera? Later when we drive here will be the part where we are getting closer to a signal that actually has the white numerals on black uh, ground active. I think it is the signal that we are approaching now in the train later. Here we will see a white 90 on black ground here. And then we will go across the switch, and the switch actually starts here. And here we have, not the right now, here this is the switch that we are going over, and here is the chevron for it. So we have a bit of time to actually 
get the speed down and then this starts here. As a general rule, we have not talked about this, the signals in France typically are on the left side of the track, just like in Switzerland, even though the cars go on the right side of the road, the trains drive on the left side of the track and so the signals are on the left side of the track. Also, um, if not, if there is some reason to put the signals on the other side, then you're, to, you're getting typically a um, signal that tells you that, and we have those signals in the, in the power change over area that we are approaching right now. Then you get signals that tell you, or signs telling you that the signals are on the other side, not yet here, but I think right here. So, signal à droite. This is telling you the signal is on the right side. And at the same thing, I think we have a corresponding sign telling you signal à gauche, which means signals to the left if they have been on the right all the time. And this little arrow that you can see here in the sun is indicating to what line this signal that you're looking at actually belongs. So if this arrow is pointing down, so this line, and you know, if you're going here, this is not for you, because this is for the driver that is coming on this line. So this arrow actually puts, connects the signals with the line. And going straight is tout droit. We looked it up. <laughs> yeah. Then one more speed indication that you can find is, for example, this here, the 140. If you're coming in towards Marseille, you know that after you drop out of the TVM, you encounter a limit to 140, and this is actually the sign that you typically don't see because you're rushing out of the tunnel much too fast. And then, you know, here it actually starts this sign is not followed by a set sign for some reason. Um, according to the rules, the set sign does not necessarily need to be there. If it's clear from other, for other reasons, then you don't need to have the set sign. Especially if, um, well, if, if if you get told by your, uh, by by your operation documents or uh, if it is clear for other reasons because there is a switch actually or, yeah. I, I don't know what uh, cases there might be. Sometimes you just don't need the set sign in connection with the white announcing speed reduction. But enough with the free camera. Let's go into the game and uh, for once I will try to reach Aix-en-Provence in time when starting in Marseille Saint-Charles. I don't know uh, what your experience is, but I find it extremely hard to get there in time without running the speed limit. <clears throat> Especially if we try to do it the way that Sire Moon suggested with the two blocks ahead, what is a really good system and is fun to use when driving this train. We have discussed this in the video about the TVM 430. If you have not watched it yet. Let's do our brake test. Everything works fine. Train did not break in the meantime. <clears throat> this little speed clock here, for example, um, is not uh, supposed to show you the speed that you're actually running at. So if you have been wondering, maybe it is broken or not, it is for the speed selector for the cruise control system. It actually tells you the target speed that you set with your speed selector. I typically do not really like the cruise control system on this train because it always tends to overspeed by one click. 
or the other. And I enjoy driving manually too much. Doors are closed. I release the brakes again. I am keeping the train with the brake hold button in place so that we cannot roll away two seconds before the departure time. I try to release those brakes so that we can actually start. I should not have done that. I should not have started the train before the t signal turned green. That is actually a no-go in, in most of the operating rules that I know that you are not allowed to start your train against or towards a red signal unless you have a special permission to do so. so typically you should wait for a train to start. Oh, we're starting the train for the ch signal to change. We know from our operating document that we are limited to 30 as long as we are in the station area. We're not getting signaled. At what point the limit increases to 60, so we more or less need to know that. Ah yeah, speed signs that I did not show you actually when we were running around with the free camera. Maybe I can show you later. When you're coming into Marseille, there is actually an announcement of the 60 limit. Where the speed limit drops from 110 to 60. But it is really almost invisible. So if you don't know where they are supposed to be, it is almost not possible for you to see them. So here, from my experience, we can accelerate to 60. Signals are green. What those white lights on top of the green signals tell you, we will get into this soon. Now the limit increases to 110. Can check if we are doing that correctly. Yes, so far, no speed violations. We just passed the open uh, mobile speed announcement board and advancing to 110 later there will be a point where we can actually accelerate 140 line speed but before we get this we get a crocodile alarm and I am Still not sure why we are getting the crocodile alarm at this point. I have not seen any signal or sign that merits getting a crocodile alarm here. So contrary to the crocodile alarm and not getting any signal that warns us about an incoming speed reduction, I try to accelerate to 140. Knowing that there will be a 90 reduction coming in at the next switch behind the next signal. But I will try to actually be in time in Aix-en-Provence as much as possible. So we will, we will have to actually slow down heavily when we are getting to the signal because at this signal you will see the 90. On top. Can you see? This is warning about us about the incoming 90. At the next switch. And now there is the switch. 
and we just made it to slow down to 90. We have to wait until the train is across the switch. From experience we know that we have to pass this funny round building. This is the train to the fun town, yeah, obviously. Nice to see you in the chat anyway. Approaching the power change up or ch change over area. Getting back to our line speed of 140. But also preparing for the power change over. Maybe we have some lights in the tunnel. Neutralizing the throttle, getting the panto down, changing pantograph mode, letting the train coast through the power change over area. When we are sure that the train has passed the power change over area, we can get the pantograph up again. And if the green indicator is on and we have passed the ref sign, then we can arm our main circuit breaker again and try to accelerate to the 160 after we have gotten our TVM indication. We can accelerate to 300 According to the aspect, according to the two blocks ahead rule, we would not accelerate to more than 270 and then 230. You say on the chat never really knew how much work the conductor has. Yeah, neither did I before I started playing this game and trying to dig deeper into all this railway stuff. It is really not... A a little thing running a train safely and running many many trains safely and in time so you see that our aspects are dropping on the TVM at the moment we should not go faster than 200 Anticipating the falling indications on the second block. Now we actually have to prepare for 200. And according to Sire Moon's rule, even to 170 already. I'm doing this a bit reluctantly now because. I said I wanted to try to be at Aix-en-Provence in time or at least as much as possible so I am not overdoing it with slowing down so if it tells us to prepare for a reduction to 160 I'm anticipating it and since they are flashing we have to slow down to 100 after the next repair but again I'm uh, taking it easy with slowing down but you see on the track we are still running uphill and at the next bridge we are going downhill and slowing down this train downhill is actually not that easy if I put on the dynamic brakes fully in the downhill right you can see we are still slowing down but at this point 
We need full brakes to not accelerate beyond the hundred back. And here is the next sign for the 100. Now we will be flagged down to 80, still falling. 80 on diamonds flashing always tells you the next aspect will be a stop aspect. The zeros on red, so you can prepare for that already. But you can see, even though I am trying to use the speed limit, and to scrape out of the limits what is what is uh, just allowed and, and not doing Sire Moon's two blocks ahead strategy, we are almost late already in Aix-en-Provence. Here comes Treper. Now 80 and now the stop aspect. And now we are actually much too fast. We should not be faster than 40 when we are running into the station. And this is all for trying not to be too late. We are already some seconds late. Actually accelerating a bit to our stopping position. And then bring the train to a full stop here. So without really breaking the train so hard that passengers fall out of their seats, it is almost not possible to get this train here in time. I barely made it before the time that we are supposed to um, depart again to get this train here. <laughs> well, sometimes people tell you that it is just like it is in real life, that you are not able to get your train to the station in time, even though you are not really being slow or whatever. If not, everything just works out perfectly and as soon as you have to wait a bit, you are late. So I have much more respect for uh, the, uh, the railway carriers if they are a bit late with their trains. It is really not easy to stay on time if you have a full timetable. Now the presentation. Yeah, it is realistic. I think it is totally realistic to be late. Even though Simon says the timings in the game are not so realistic because in real life you would even have a bit more time actually to drive a bit more safe and less upfront. Presentation. Rounding up the French signaling. We have talked about this. We have talked about the red signals. We have distinguished between the NF signals and the F signals, the non-franchisable and the franchisable signals. Here this is a non-franchisable, a non-passable signal. Two reds, if at red, and then it is called a carry. If it is only an F and franchisable signal, you would only have one red and then it would be a semaphore and you can pass it after stopping in front of that. If you haven't watched the stream uh, or, or the video, then feel yourself invited to watch it. You find it on my YouTube channel and there you can f find all the different red signals and what they mean. On the other hand, you have the green signal, obviously, you also have the white bouton lit on the green signal. Typically, if it is an NF signal, this is called a feu vert, a green light, or a voie libre, a uh, well, clear track signal. In between, you have the yellow one, avertissement in, France, uh, in French, 
also with the Uto light lit if it is an MNF signal telling you expect the next signal to be red. Sometimes if the signal that is showing the yellow is closer than 500 meters to the red signal so that you have a hard time getting your train to a stop after seeing the yellow signal you can get a flashing yellow uh, feu jean clignotant uh, yellow light flashing um, to warn you that there will be an, advertis uh, an advert advertisement signal or a caution signal that is closer to uh, the stop signal than it usually would be and closer so that you have to start slowing down already. So that was recapping about the stopping sequence to the carré signal to the red light. What I wanted to talk about today is how can we tell the driver with the signals that he has to slow down typically for a switch. So let's take away this um, yellow flashing signal again. Ah yeah, those things I almost forgot. You see them in the game actually. They tell you that there is a signal incoming in cases when you cannot see the signal from afar. So unlike other signaling systems you don't have a signal repeater actually, but you have those signals that tell you there is a signal behind the next corner. They are not always there, they are only there if you cannot see the signal properly from afar, so they tell you expect a signal incoming. They are called in French the Mirliton and they are put up in a distance of always 100 meters in between and yeah they count down. There are not always three strikes but maximum three strikes not like in Germany where you have maximum five strikes uh, introducing a, a distance signal but here in in France they uh, start with three at max sometimes only two sometimes only one and only so they are not always there only if the visibility is impaired so back to our uh, speed signaling this is our track and you can see our track has a diverging line so here is a switch and let's say this switch is a switch where you need to slow down to 30 if you are diverging this is something that can be shown with signaling aspects. This is where this weird form of those signals comes into play. You can get an aspect that looks like this two yellow lights on top of each other in a vertical line. On a signal it can be an NF signal or an F signal, does not really matter. And this tells you that at the next switch you have to slow down to 30. In France, in French, it is called Rappel 30. That means reminder 30. It means here actually starts um, uh, uh, a limit to 30 because you're going across the switch. Again, we have seen this in the game already, just like with the mobile uh, speed limit boards, you get this chevron pointing to the bottom. Pancarte, chevron, pointe en bas en français. If you can recognize what I'm saying as French, I'm sorry for butchering your beautiful language again. But nevertheless, I try to pronounce the names the, the names in French. So this is a downward pointing chevron, and pancarte is the sign with a downward pointing chevron. And this tells you here the switch uh, actually begins. And so you need to be down to 30 with your speed. And to announce this, you get these signals. Again, two yellow lights, but in a horizontal fashion. These are ralentissement 30, slowing down to 30, but the announcement. So this is the announcement signal. This is the, well, execution signal. And here where it actually needs to be because here the, uh, the speed limit starts. Um, you're saying on the chat, uh, this is your profession, you seem to be very professional about all of it. No, it is uh, not really my profession. Part of my profession deals with the legal evaluation of traffic accidents, including railway accidents. So I sometimes have to deal with those regulations, but uh, <clears throat> not as a professional. So I'm not the railway professional, but I really like to dig into those signaling systems and safety systems. And uh, 
when I try to understand that, then I can try to uh, yeah, put them into a form that is not so hard to understand and to memorize it. So if you see those signals here, for a slowdown to 30, you have those yellow lights. The horizontal arrangement is the announcement. The vertical around, uh, arrangement is the execution. And then you have those chevron sign again to know that here, at least, you need to be down to your speed. If you have a switch that allows a faster traveling across it, like, say, 60, then you can have signaling aspects for this as well. Uh, one thing before we get to the 60, in case there is a red signal that you have to stop after diverging, after going across the switch, then you can combine this signaling aspect with the advertisement, the advertisement that we have seen up there. So the single yellow on the bottom of the signal in combination with the two yellows in a... Um, in in a vertical fashion tells you you have to slow down to 30 here and to expect to stop at the next signal so you can combine them this is the same aspect as, that we have up there but in combination with the speed signaling and just as we have seen here in case that this signal is very close to the stop signal then you can get the flashing yellow on the announcement signal so this combination again is possible so you can have three yellow lights on the same signal and now you know that you can just split the signal in two bottom half is for announcing the stop and top half is for announcing and executing the speed limit on the switch now i've already uh, introduced that this stuff also works with a higher diverging speed of 60 what do we do for that if we want to have execution 60 and announcement 60 limit we just have our yellow lights flashing same system again but now they are flashing so if you see those flashing double uh, yellows in horizontal and vertical fashion then you have announcement and execution of a speed limit of 60. again they can be combined with a single yellow in steady or flashing for the announcement of a stop signal. So far, quite systematic. If they are not flashing, they are 30. If they are horizontal, it's the announcement. If they are vertical, it's the execution. And if they are flashing, then they are 60 and with the same system here. But what do we do if we want to diverge uh, at a different speed than 30 or 60. So historically, 30 and 60 might have been slow and fast switches, but obviously, and we have seen this in the game just like that, um, we have nowadays switches that allow switching at much higher speeds, for example, at 90. How do we do that? Unlike the Swiss system that we have in a different video, we do not have signaling aspects for our color light system to signal a speed of 90 or even higher. But then we would have to resort to something else. So I'm putting this out of the way so that we can actually talk about it. The signals itself will be uh, green if there is no stop uh, incoming. Obviously, they can also be yellow if there is a, a red light. But uh, just as we have seen it in our game here, we also switched or diverged at the switch with a speed of 90. The signals itself are green, so the aspects are not telling us anything specific. But then we are using so-called TIFFs, the Tableau Indicateur de Vitesse Limite. And those things are those that we have already seen. The, black numeral, uh, the white numerals on black ground on the signals. I've tried to show you that when we were, when we were going there with, with our train on top of the signal, telling you here starts, or at least at the next switch, starts the, um, uh, a, a limit to 90, white on black. Whereas, and this is called a tief de rappel fermé. So this is the reminder again 
the execution sign and it is for me it is closed so it is actually on it is active and uh, this one is a switchable thing so the mobile i left out but the announcement sign for that would be that one that we have not seen in the game because it wasn't there it is the black numerals on the white diamond we only know this style black numerals on white diamonds on the tvm aspects when they are announcing a speed limit but they live actually in the real world as well you get the speed indicated on a white diamond obviously they cannot be flashing in on, on a sign but they can be switched on if this one is on and then you have the tv mobile at distance for me a distance means the distant signal obviously the announcement signal and for me again closed on so if you encounter this the 90 on the white diamond first you know okay i have to expect that this one is on and that i have to reduce my speed until i go into the switch and this obviously works with different numerals as well everything other than 30 or 60. this uh, announcement signal the uh, div mobile a distance can also uh, is typically connected with a crocodile alarm every time we will see that later you have an announced speed reduction with a diamond you are typically getting a crocodile alarm and you have to acknowledge that and then this yellow light will turn on on your kvb uh, display uh, reminding you that you got a crocodile alarm it does not necessarily need to be connected with a color light signal it can be but it can also stand alone and we have seen that in the game already that at one point there were uh, signals of that kind that were standing alone they were not for me they were not closed at this point when we looked at it in the game but they did not have a signal attached to them that was that so with those things the tief mobile a distance and de rappel we can signal different diverging speech uh, speeds at the switch than 30 or 60 for 30 and 60 we have our double yellows and for everything else we can resort to this another thing that we have seen in the game what does not have to do anything with the speed but with the route information is this on top of the signal i have switched it a bit to the side because i did not have that much room but typically it is just in the middle on top of the signal you have those white lights and sometimes it is only one sometimes it is two and sometimes actually three and they tell you just like in the british system you know that those feathers those direction indicators on top of the signal tell you where you are rooted on the next switches and this is a quite simple system actually it is called an indicateur de direction or id id I think in, in, in French more like and this is the direction indicator obviously and if it is only one then it is telling you that you are going the first possibility counted from the left to the right so if the switch is diverging you to the left then you are going across the switch if the switch is diverging you to the right then you are going straight ahead because uh, regardless on whether you are switching or going ahead this is always telling you the first second or third possibility from the left to the right so you have three lights at two maybe there are some with more lights but in the rules they have three lights maximum and then they count it from the left to the right so if there is a third one there would be the three one so if you see the one then it is the leftmost if it if you have two then it is the second from the left that will be the rightmost because there are only two and the three one will be the third from the right uh, yeah that is this the direction indicator so we have the means to tell the driver the speed at which he is supposed to diverge and the path that he is supposed to be going sometimes but i have not seen this in the game um, the route is also announced to the driver and then you can have a tableau indicateur de direction à distance uh, t -I -D -D. that is a sign that is telling you in advance 
whether you are going to the left or to the right at a fork or at a, some certain switch. But th they are not necessarily always there. Typically, they are not there. Uh, in the game, I have not seen one instance of them. What now if we are actually going straight ahead and not in direction 1, but in direction 2? Obviously, then this cannot be correct. But what would we have then? The first thing is that our uh, tief de rappel cannot be at 90, because we are not going across the switch with 90, but we are staying on our uh, track speed limit at this point. On the older versions of this signal, they just flip around by 90 degrees and they show the side and then you get this white horizontal bar that we have seen in the game on the uh, uh, announcement version of this signal but in the digitalized wor world in our signal that we have seen he would just have the black screen and the black screen we have seen in, in in the game as well because now we are going straight ahead the speed reduction is not active so the tief de rappel is ouvert it is open it is not closed for the direction indicator, we would have the two lights on, telling us we are going on the second possibility counted from the left, and this is at the same time the rightmost one. That's why both white lights would be on. And this you can actually see in the game. If you drive your TGV and look at the signal and count the lights, then you will see what path you are going. And then you can look at the switches if they did it properly or not. The distance signal, the announcement signal, will have this white <coughs> line instead of the white diamond. This is what we have seen in the game when we have looked at the signal. Then the Tief Mobile Distance is ouvert as well, is open as well. And then the driver knows, okay, I don't need to prepare for a speed limit because I'm not diverging at the next switch. Uh, if we had a tableau indicateur de direction à distance, then it would obviously point into the different direction as well. So this is more or less um, the thing that can change from service to service. I have not really seen in the game a service that did not get this 90 reduction in the game. So the 90 at this particular switch is more probably always on, diverging us to the right at this point. Those uh, direction indicators are in the game, and from what I've seen, they are actually working well. Um, the 90 is not announced. At least I have not found this uh, 90 on diamonds sign on. There is one signal that is able to show that from what you can see, but I have never seen it on when I drove this service. Um, maybe this is what this crocodile alarm that we got when we got closer to this 90 is connected with, where we did not find any any reason why we got this crocodile alarm. So maybe this is connected and they just missed uh, setting the distance signal to the Fermi indication, to the close indication at this point. But uh, maybe I'm mixing something up or, or getting it wrong at this point. Yeah. What else do we have? Yeah. Next to those switchable speed signs, there must be some speed signs that are always active, that are permanent. That is, we have seen this in the game already, the black numerals on white. That is a tief fix or de tief fix a distance. That is the announcement again. Du type ordinaire, <laughs> the regular type. Uh, according to the rules, because there are other types as well. They can sometimes find signs that look like uh, a half circle uh, cut on top or cut on the bottom, so pointing to the bottom or to the, the, the top, and then they are only applicable for certain trains that run under a certain regime, but I don't want to go into that because we have, do not have the slightest uh, use of that in the game so far as soon as it gets into the game. You can be sure I will uh, update my, my videos about it and use that. Sometimes you actually have five cornered uh, signs for special applications, but typically they are a square or we can see it a diamond again, but the normal version of it, the tip ordinaire, is the, uh, the, the square one. And it is white, 
black on white is typically the announcement, whereas white on black in this system is the execution. And so we have the execution here with the set sign, the pancarte set for son d'action, because this is the zone where the uh, limit takes effect and you have already seen that they can sometimes be mounted to the same post and it takes effect immediately but the idea is that you get the announcement first so you can adapt to it and then this is where it actually starts and this is where it ends again if it is a speed limit that is only valid for like for a curve or for a descent or some particularly uh, dangerous part of track where you need this speed limit and so you can signal signal it like this you can reprise, you can resume with your with your speed and go back to your old uh, line speed. So applicable is the speed limit between those two signs. Obviously, here the whole train has to leave the area, so the last vehicle has to pass the reprise de vitesse sign before uh, the driver can accelerate back to line speed. Sometimes you get the diamonds on a fixed signal like here the 60 on a white diamond again this is an announcement sign but what is the difference every time the announcement sign is not a square but a diamond then it is connected with a crocodile alarm then you will have to acknowledge it then your crocodile system will start beeping you have to acknowledge it and then you get the steady uh, yellow light to remind you that there is a speed limit incoming and from, from what i have read in the rules this always happens or typically happens at least if there is a drop in speed limit of 40 uh, kilometers per hour or more then you will get a diamond shaped speed sign with a crocodile alarm Apart from that, it has the same indication at this. It is also a announcement signal that there is a speed limit incoming. But we have also seen that all this does not necessarily need to happen. Sometimes you just get the speed sign of that kind and then you need to know from your operating uh, uh, documents or because it is apparent for, for other reasons where the speed limit begins. We have seen this 140 reduction when we are coming in into the power change uh, area. And then we need to more or less be down to the 140 at once. And we have seen that this uh, thing actually can happen, that you can get the pancarte sit with the announcement sign. This especially makes sense if you are increasing your speed limit if you're driving out of a station. And this is what we have seen on this route that we cannot go in the game because it is only there for making the station area complete, but it is uh, not represented after we have passed this sign, but it is in the game at least. So, and then obviously the speed limit starts at once until it ends somewhere. Yeah, back to that again. This is the area here. Just to recap it a bit, we have the mobile or the switchable speed uh, limit signs. Welcome back, welcome back, no problem. So this, those are the switchable speed signs and those are the speed signs that are always active, that are permanent. And uh, if they are square, they typically are not connected with the crocodile alarm. If they are on a diamond, then you will have to um, yeah, satisfy your crocodile. Last thing for today, before we go back to driving our train, the shunting signals that are not necessarily uh, speed and direction, but I wanted to uh, round it up here as well. We have seen that the stop indications on shunting lines for shunting services outside of main lines, outside of through lines are typically not red signals, but they are purple and they only have one light and still are a carré, so they cannot be passed. This is a stop and stay signal, carré violet, and the train may not pass those signals. Same indications as a double red signal. They can also be like this on a buffer block, in French, ortoir, and obviously you're not allowed to pass the buffer block. They can also have this shape, then they are type bas, type bas, in uh, comparison to type O, when they are actually high, so they are low on the ground. Same indication as the high version. 
Instead of a green light uh, when you are a uh, shunting service, then you will get a white light. Obviously, you have seen this in the game. They are in the game as well. And this is a feu blanc, a white light. And they allow you to pass it as a shunting service. They can also be shown on a regular high signal. And then the Euton is typically lit with them. And then you can pass the signal, but you don't get the indication that the green light would give you that the whole block is free and that you can go to line speed, but it only allows you to pass it under shunting rules. And typically you get this. There are some uh, services in the game where you are supposed to take the train from the station platform in Marseille to the depot. And then instead of a green light, you will get a white light indicating you that you're in drive out of the station area, but not go on the main line, but you will be directed to the depot where you can uh, put your train to rest for the night. We go back to this. This is the normal indication of those white lights that you can see. Another one. I have never uh, encountered one in the game. Sometimes you can get a flashing white, the feu blanc clignotant again, the white flashing light. It is more or less the same indication that the white light gives you, so you might pass it, but with two exceptions. First thing is it warns you that the distance to the next signal is shorter than usual or is very short, so that you are actually almost uh, after this signal encounter a violet signal, a carré violet or an ortoir. And the flashing white light never allows you to go on a main line. So you can never pass this sign. Limit the maneuver. This is the end of Schund, end uh, or Schund limit or Halt für ein Schierfahrten in German. You have a var variety of those signs. They always tell you here is the limit for shunting services. Pass this sign. You need a track warrant. You need a far plan. You need to have permission to go out on the main line. And the flashing white light never allows you to drive out on the main line. Although in the British system you have those uh, yellow shunting signals that allow you to go into the shunting neck but never out into the main line. Also the flashing white. You can pass it, but you may never leave the limit of shunt with that. You cannot go out on the main line. This would be the Pankart LM limit de manoeuvre, limit of shunt. Let's take this out of the picture again. About this indicator we have talked about in the game already. This is the tableau -chi, um, telling you that you are leaving a main line and going into a service area. This is the speed signs that you encounter in the service area. They are white on black, indicating I have actually not really found them in the rules, but the indication is clear. You have to stay below this speed. If you are a TGV, if you are an autre train, then you have to adhere to the other limit. We have seen this in, in, in the game and it applies at this point already because with lo those l slow speeds you can adhere to them easily. That was my presentation for today. Thank you for uh, paying attention and listening to me. I rounded up the French signaling system with that. The only color light aspect that I have not talked about, or the only, there are two actually, there is the flashing green, what only applies to a certain uh, regime, only applies to pre uh, lines that are not in the game, and uh, the disc, what is uh, quite a special signal. So I will talk about this as soon as we have got them in, in the... In, uh, thank you very much, South. Um, as soon as we get that in the game, and I, I can really always stress it in not enough, I, I would like to have some French lines that are not high speed lines to get the normal, normal signaling more in the game <clears throat> and to enjoy it and to play around with it. And then I will talk about this, about the flashing green and uh, also some indications on the KVB indicator that are connected with this Prianos uh, system. Yeah, but for our purposes here, 
we have learned about all the aspects that there are. And now we can go back to train, dr train driving. You can see we are already 30 seconds past our departure time, but we have to wait for our passengers to get on the train. If you need to make haste, you might want to start the door closing procedure even before the yellow circle has fully closed. And then we can go. TBM is indicating as a 170. From the white on black numerals we can see that it is a speed limit, what we typically get when we are departing from a station that is below line speed. Well, if we're lucky, we will soon enough get a clear 320 line speed. And we can try to be not too late at Avignon. Driving the other direction from Avignon to Marseille, it is not as hard to stay on time, even if you have to stop in Aix-en-Provence. There you can make it quite easily, even with the two blocks ahead system. But driving from Marseille to Avignon, it is really a bit of a bother. You can... yeah. We lost 20 points because of leaving not early enough. So it won't be a perfect run. But we have to deal with that. In the German rules of operations they have a provision that states safety bigger than punctuality, punctuality bigger than economy and I think this should be true for all railway operations we can bring the speed to 300 and from experience we know that when we are actually closing in on the 300 Then we are running into an ascent, so that we can almost go full throttle. It's a beauty, this train, isn't it? The TGV duplex. Oh, duplex. An impressive piece of the art of engineering. So now we're going into the ascent, as promised. And the train is slowing down due to the ascent. Due to the climb. And even with full throttle, we are not going beyond the 300. As soon as we are on top, we have to throttle down. Now we are on top. And going down a bit. And now we will accelerate again. And we can take back the throttle. And finally even consider braking a bit. Excuse me. So what I actually do not know is if 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 uh, TGV drivers in France are required to have the normal lights on when driving, or if they can just drive with reduced lights. Obviously, having to reduce them. If there is a train coming from the opposite direction, or when you're driving into a station. But in Germany, as far as I know, drivers do not necessarily need 
to use the bright lights not even at night not even in tunnels it is just okay for the train to have <coughs> the three white lights on top but it can be the reduced version and marker lights on British trains you do not have bright lights at all you typically only have the the marker lights here we had to use the PBL brakes a bit so that we don't accelerate beyond the 300 even though we have the electric brake full on but then never forget to release the PBL brakes fully again otherwise it will slow your train your train down severely most operating rules in the United States on the other hand state that you should always drive with bright headlights unless passing a station unless passing a train coming from the opposite direction or overtaking a train but there the rule is bright lights I have not been able to find out what it is in France because it is actually not so easy in my opinion to see the train coming from the opposite direction fast enough to be able to actually slow uh, to reduce your lights if you have them on full Now limit climbed to 320. Again, due, due to the gradient, due to the hill, the driving uphill, even with max power, we are not accelerating but losing speed. So to keep your train at the highest possible speed without over speeding, it helps a lot to know the gradient profile of your of your route because now we're going downhill again maxing out the electric brake is just enough here At this point it isn't, we need some PPL brakes, some additional air brakes. That can be released again. And again some PPLs. Yeah, I might have said this before, I really enjoy driving this train and keeping it at speed using the different brake systems with the advice that Sire Moon gave in the comments under my previous videos <coughs> it really feels quite realistic to drive the train <coughs> So where is the fastest train in Europe? Good question. Is there actually a faster train than the TGV in France? Is the Freccia Rossa faster in Italy? I'm not sure. 
I have to admit, I'm not really a train enthusiast, so I don't know things like that. But maybe I will research that and put the answer in the comments if there is a faster train. Well, we have trains in Germany that go 330, so much is for sure. But if there are TGVs that run faster than the 320 that we have in this DLC, I would not know. <laughs> yeah, I'm more like a regulations and signaling and safety systems enthusiast and not so much a train enthusiast. Sometimes I look in, in, uh, into train technology if those trains are actually in the game and I want to understand how they are supposed to work. This is why you find some videos on my channel dealing with transmission and uh, traction systems, brake systems. Or steam locomotive technology that we had two weeks ago. That is interesting. But I will find out where the fastest trains in, in Europe are. Oh yeah. Have you played Railgrade? That's what I've been playing last week. And I enjoyed it. It's not really a, a rail simulator, but it's fun anyway. And it is quite instructive about how to create tracks so that the trains do not collide with each other and do not cause delays and stuff. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, all the trains you have in Railway Empire, right? But those are fictitious and I didn't really like the, the look and feel of the game. So. For a short time we got a different TVM aspect, but it fell back to 320. But that tells us that we are encountering... And now we have... Without a flashing 320... We get a 300 on white diamonds. What is a bit weird? So we did not get the flashing aspect, now we get the 300 on flashing. What is weird again, because the 300 was announced for the next block. Well, yeah. That is okay. The 300 actually came. But now we're getting announced a further drop in speed to 270. Okay, no, it's not weird. We're already getting slowed down. <coughs> for the stop in Avignon. But still it was weird that we did not get a flashing aspect. Since we did not react to the flashing 300, we are a bit late on the brakes. Just made the 270. We should be on our way down to 200. If we get a flashing 230 on diamonds. 
always according to Sire Moon's two block ahead doctrine. This is why I'm using the PBLs. Now we should be on our way to 170 or 160 even. So, approaching the 260. Well, no, we are still accelerating because of the gradient. See, the 260, and it is still flashing. So, after the 160 flashing on diamonds, we should actually aim for the 100. I think there is not the 120 aspect in between. But here I deviate from the two blocks ahead system a bit. Because here, with those lower ranges of speed limits, you have a lot of track and time to adjust. Ah, 130 is in between. Would give us. Or tell us to go down to the 100, at least the 130 is already secured. But the limit of 100 does not typically show up before we got through the tunnel. So I might just want to coast on that speed here a bit. The 130 at the next repair is already secured. Now the 100 is incoming. But from experience, typically not before the end of the tunnel that we are approaching. Here on the left you could see two signs that tell the TVM system to open and close the main circuit breaker. As long as we are running under TVM, we don't need to do that. The train does that on its own because it gets respective commands from interesting now we get down to the 100 so maybe we had traffic in front of us that allowed us for a short while to go back to the 130 and even faster yeah what I was trying to say the TVM system typically gets its indications by track circuits we did not really talk about the technical side of TVM just with CD radar for a short while so, the indications are coming via track circuits, but some additional information like turning the TVM system on and off and also opening and closing the main circuit breaker uh, are sent into the train by inductive loops that are in the train. So this is how the train can open and close the main circuit breaker on its own. So, we're already closing in on Avignon Station. Eighty and stop. Yes. And again, we do not really have a lot of time. Nevertheless, I want to stop the train less harsh then in uh, Aix-en-Provence I went down to 40 until we got 
to the platform so that we are not running alongside the platform. Typically, it would always slow down much harder, I guess. And don't run along the platform with 40 for so long. And bring the train to a gentle stop. So that we do not need to brake so hard at the end. In this DLC, not that I have found it, there are some... Um, the question is whether there is turntable or linkage stuff, so some shunting services here. In this DLC, I don't think there is. There are some services where you drive your trains into the depot and out of the depot, but no turntables. Well, that would be quite a long turntable to have uh, your, your TGV on them. So, typically, I don't think that turntables and, and TGVs is, is a thing. This is why you have a driving cap on both ends. Uh, but, uh, obviously, since we have a train that is constituted out of two train sets, you could do some shunting and connecting linkage train. I think in uh, some layering services on other tracks, like I would have to check out the southeastern high speed if this allows for some uh, services where you can link those trains together. The front hatch for doing so is actually animated, so you can open this thingy here. As you can see, and then you have a Scharfenberg Kupplung there. So, how did we do? Well, at least here we arrived at the due time, and uh, I think we did not go too fast. But obviously we lost some points because we were too late. No matter. Return to free roam. So, we can open the coupling hatch, and... Uh, yeah, a Schaffenberg Kupplung, so you can connect those trains automatically. Would be cool if viewers could get in as passengers or other staff. Yeah, that would be really cool to have uh, somebody being the guard or as passengers on the train in the multiplayer universe. But at least in the latest DLC, there are some uh, missions that you can run as a guard and check... Uh, tickets and, and stuff like this. I have not bought this uh, DLC yet, but from what you could... Le I don't think... I don't know if it is even out. Maybe it's just due to be released in a couple of days. But there it is advertised that you can do guard missions. But obviously not as multiplayer. But maybe in the future. Um, what else is left for me to do? One thing is show another instance of, oh, I cannot get here, ah, oh, yeah, here, of uh, permanent speed signs. Here, for example, you see the 60 with the set attached to the same post. So if you're leaving on this track here, then you have to adhere to 60 starting at this point. Again, you can see the arrow pointing to the track that it applies to because here the signal is on the right side. And like this one that is on the left like typically and because this is on the right you get the arrow so that there is no confusion and um, let's quickly restart the service again because i wanted to show you the losanges the diamonds that announced the 60 speed reductions if you are driving into marseille because it took me quite a while to actually see them for the first time so i want to uh, round it up and uh don't want to complain that the signals and signs are not in the game. So we are back in Marseille here. This is the service where it starts. And after having seen the presentation, we can round up our permanent and uh, switchable speed signs. So uh, here is the washings washing machine the train wash and there is no service where you drive through this train wash as at least not that i have seen in here that is 
as I have told you in the presentation, one of those uh, TIFF mobile à distance uh, without being attached to a color light signal and they are over open at the time. You see the vertical white line telling you that they are not diverging, that you don't have to expect a speed limit, but you can see where the white diamond can be switched on if need be, but I've never seen it happen in the game here. And then, let's see if I find my losanges for the permanent speed reduction to 60 when you're driving into uh, into the Marseille area. Here they are. Did you see them? No, you did not. So just imagine you're coming home to Marseille and you're driving here on the left side probably because you're always driving on the left side and here they are. Again, it is... Uh, it depends on the light whether you can see them or not. If you have driven the service, you might know for yourself whether they are actually visible properly or not. But they are here. So, losange, diamond form, meaning they are connected with a crocodile. And here is the crocodile. Say hello to the crocodile. Croc. And uh, you get a crocodile alarm when passing those signs when running into Marseille. I don't know if that actually happens, but it should. Going outward, I don't think that there are the thieves open or active at ever if you get the... But sometimes I s I've seen some that could actually be active when you're driving towards the power change over area. Oops, no, I got caught in the signals. But yeah, I think that the TIF at distance is not active, although it should be active to warn us about the 90 reduction after passing this area. Yeah, here. At least those here, they are open, but they should warn you about the incoming 90 reduction that comes on the next signal. And I don't think they were on. Maybe I did not see it. I should watch, uh, rewatch the stream maybe to check. And then here you typically get the 90 reduction for this uh, switch. With this view of the highway and the train track, I thank you very much for bearing with me. Um, la cost of the train ends. Yeah, I don't know actually what is older the brand or the crocodile system um, because uh, the crocodile system is a really old system 1870 or whatever it was invented and is still around yeah it would definitely be Indiana Jones no tickets type of card so you throw them out of the window well that can cause severe delays if you throw people out of the window onto the track so please, please be sure to throw them out on the platform <laughs> no ticket Kein Fahrschein, kein Flugschein, it would be, I guess, in the in Indiana Jones version. Well, thank you very much. We will be we, we will be very interested in seeing what the guard missions will be in the new DLC. At some point, I will grab it, I think, and then maybe we will have a train guard stream as well. Thank you very much. Have a nice time. Uh, thank you for moderating, AJ. Thank you for your input, Sauce, and. Uh, yeah, see you soon.